Warlord's Ruin is the new dungeon inside of Destiny 2, and many people are trying to solo or solo flawless the boss. However, if you've come to this video, probably one of these things has happened to you. You're at final stand, and then you die. Or you're trying to get to a damage phase, and then you kill the actual taken scorn boss, and then you die. Or you're trying to kill one of the other scorn bosses on the other side of the map, and you die. Or maybe the boss somehow stamps you through a wall, or right as you're about to do damage to the boss, they kill you like that. Now, you might be getting a little frustrated, and it's completely understandable. You've seen tons of YouTube guides and things like that showing how you can easily solo the dungeon, but a lot of times they're using weapons and gear that you don't have access to. That's led you to this video, and in here, we're not going to be using any raid gear, no crazy strats or swaps. I'm going to show you exactly where to stand and exactly what to do. Today, we're going to be showing you how anybody can solo flawless the Warlord's Ruin dungeon completely with a hunter. You don't have to be esoteric. You don't have to be ATP or Datto, you can just be a normal Destiny 2 player. Through each of the encounters, I'll be showing you the builds that you need to use. In addition, I will have the links for the Destiny item manager in the description box below. And of course, some of these things can be switched out based on what you're comfortable with. In addition, I'll be breaking down every single section so that you know exactly where to stand, what to do so that you don't die in some of these critical situations. Finally, I'll be showing you some tips and tricks that you can use to maximize your damage so that it does not take three hours to do. If you're a Titan, I've already done a video guide for you, and that will be linked in the description box below. We're nearing 100k on that video, so thanks to all those people who watched it. And if you're a Warlock, I'll have a guide coming for you very soon, as well as some other Destiny 2 content as we get ready for the final shape. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss a single thing. The first thing we gotta do is cover the seasonal artifact so we can maximize our damage and our gains. First things first, make sure you have Solo Operative unlocked. It is the most critical mod that you can have. And then right after that, for this dungeon, because there's a lot of Taken and Scorn, the From Whence You Came artifact perk. Of course, you have to make sure you get your season rank up quite a bit, so make sure you get that unlocked before you try to attempt that. Those two are going to be the most important things that you need to have on. After that, with the builds we're going to be using, we're going to be using a lot of solar mods specifically so we can be radiant and scorch things. So things like Kindling Trigger is really, really solid. I'm going to put on Heart of the Flame as the artifact perk here as well, but you don't have to use it, especially since we're running solo. Flint Striker is really solid and will help us keep our radiant uptime constantly. Along with that, we can put on Torch, which will allow us to get Stasis and Strand buffs. This is a really good set of mods right here. And then on top of that, you want to make sure that you put on Revitalizing Blast. This is going to be one of the biggest ways that we can weaken bosses, especially as a solo player. And this is one of the strengths of using a Hunter with this particular run. You can constantly reapply the Revitalizing Blast with your knives, dodge, and get your knives back. Get a couple of other mods selected so you can choose Rays of Precision and like I said earlier, the solo operative mod as well. Now, a couple of details that we need to go over. We're going to be using our knives quite a bit with our hunter build. This is really great because we basically can just spam our knives constantly, get enemies to explode. But in addition with Assassin's Cowl, we'll be able to stay invisible even though we're not using a void subclass as well as getting a chunk of our life back when we get kills with them. However, many people know, especially if you play on controller, that a lot of times when you're too close to an enemy, you'll actually melee the enemy and you will just use your uncharged melee. Instead, we need to use some specific options. Now, if you're on keyboard and mouse, you know you can change your binds and things like that, but many people don't know that you can go into the controller settings and set a custom laid out, and then you can choose your uncharged and charged melee. I'm blown away by how many console and controller players still don't know that this exists. Now, another thing that we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to do a little bit of loadout swapping. The number one thing I hear from console players is that sometimes if they're using an older system, their inventory and their loadouts don't load very quickly. When I was an Xbox player, I actually used an external SSD loaded Destiny 2 specifically on that SSD, and my inventory and loadouts swapped very quickly. So this is an easy solution for those people who are struggling with any kind of loadout or inventory issues. Yes, it costs a little bit more, but it's less than a new console. As we hop into the dungeon, I'm not going to hit the traversal sections unless if there's specific important things we need to hit. That'll help make this video more concise to the point and easier for you to wrap your head around and most importantly also help the youtube algorithm stay happy 
With that, let's get to the first boss, which is Rat Hill, the first Knight of Fickrel. There's a couple of different things that you have to do to get to a damage phase. It's not very difficult, but we'll cover the build first so that you understand how the mechanics of this fight are going to flow. First of all, we're going to be using Sunshot, which is an easy to get exotic in Destiny 2, which pairs really well with all of those artifact mods that I mentioned earlier. In addition, we're going to be using a Scatter Signal, which is really good for damage on the boss because it has controlled burst, which will help us do more damage if we hit every single one of our bolts on the boss. And I'm either gonna be using an overflow or a slice roll. Slice allows you to sever the boss, which basically means that he will do less damage to you if you hit him while slice is active. Or you can use overflow, which basically allows you to automatically reload your weapon beyond the normal capacity when you pick up ammo, which is really good in these tight damage phases. After that, use some kind of a grenade launcher. There's two world grenade launchers you could use, Marcillion C, or you can use Typhon GL5. Look for an explosive light roll and an auto loading or a reload perk along with that. Of course, for all of these, make sure that you have boss spec. If you've done some trials of Osiris, which lots of hunters play PVP, you could also pick up a Cataphrase gl3 this is one of the best weapons that you can use here and you don't have to go flawless or have an adept role you're basically just looking for a bait and switch or envious assassin or auto loading holster role specifically on this it will help you to do a significant amount of damage and a lot of the one and two phase versions of the boss fights are usually done with the cataphract gl3 if you've done the root of nightmares raid and you have Craxus's distress you can also use a reconstruction surrounded roll which will do a significant amount of damage to the boss basically just for free and being surrounded by ads any of these grenade launchers will do work of course these two will do much more and much better but if you have these these will also get the job done Along with that, we're going to be switching from two specific builds. We're going to be using our Assassin's Cow, like I showed earlier, throwing our knives and getting a kills and getting finishers will allow us to get invisibility and healing. But then when we're ready to do damage, we're going to switch really quickly over to a build with Celestial Nighthawk. With the buff it received this season, this is the best damage build that you can get right now. You need to use Celestial Nighthawk along with Radiant, which you can get from hitting the boss with your throwing knives and also weakening them. And then you pair that with two kinetic weapon surges. For some reason, three does not work, but two allows you to stack a significant amount of damage and do the maximum amount of damage with one shot. Of course, for our gunslinger, make sure you're using marksman. And then we're using Ember of Singeing, Ember of Torches, Ember of Ashes, Ember of Empyrean, and Ember of Solace. Some of these can be swapped out. For example, Ember of Torches. You can get Radiant just from getting lots of kills with your weapon, like Sunshot, any of your solar weapons. If you wanna use a different thing, like Ember of Char or Ember of Tempering or things like that, that would also be fine. All right, let's break down the encounter. When you start, of course, make sure that you have a chest piece that you can swap to and maximize whatever your heavy ammo reserves are, and then you'll be good. You'll start the boss fight, and then there will be a bunch of enemies that will spawn up. You wanna kill them as soon as they spawn here. Not only will that help you control all of the adds, but it will also proc Radiance and start to get some of the orbs of power that you need to start storing up armor charges. If you're starting to take damage, come over here and rotate. The boss will eventually spawn you into a jail cell here, and you need to shoot three of the taken eyes. If you're a controller player, just take your time, don't sweat, just look up and down and left and right as quickly as possible. The goal once you get out of those sections is you want to stand in the areas of these scorned totems and clear as many of them as you can. The more you clear, the more time you'll get to do damage. What I'm going to do is hide behind this wall here while I'm invisible and then switch loadouts that will help me stay alive. When you start boss damage, you want to make sure you proc Radiant as well as weaken the boss with your melee. And you can see there, I got 999,999 damage with a single shot. Even though I didn't get a lot of time to damage the boss, I still did a significant amount of damage. Now, this was pretty darn safe, and there's really not much more to it other than that. Get your super back, do as much damage as you can. You can do damage to the boss without the super, but I find it easier just to kill some different enemies and shoot all of the cages. Make sure that you stay invisible and build up as much ammo as you can so that when you do have those boss damage phases, you can do a significant amount of damage. Now, that all happened really quickly, so I'm going to slow 
slow it down a little bit and talk through the process one more time with all the details that maybe I'm thinking about. Here I'm in cover here. Once I get out of jail, I make myself invisible and then I'm going to go clear as many of the scorn totems as I can. Right here I'm standing in this circle. I'm going to re-up my invisibility by just standing here in this spot. Quick note, the boss can still stomp the ground even if you're invisible and you get close to him. It's a weird bug that happens and for some reason he can still sense you. Now I don't go for that additional totem to extend the time because I don't have enough time to clear it. So instead, I'm going to use cover here and switch to my other loadout. Now I'm still invisible until I switch that loadout so that I'm very safe when I do that. I chuck my knives to weak the boss and then I proc my golden gun shot. If you feel comfortable, you can switch to a different loadout with a couple of different surges and then you can actually go through, do a little bit more damage get an orb of power if you need another armor charge like i'm going to do here in a second and then do as much damage as you can and rinse and repeat if at any point that you feel like you're going to be in trouble hit yourself with a healing grenade don't get too close to the boss especially with grenade launchers you want to keep your distance and you'll notice that i'm using this area here or on the opposite side of the map with all of this cover for switching loadouts and making sure that i stay alive Here's a really good example of another good damage phase. Again, chuck the knives, hit him with my golden gun shot. And this isn't even really optimal. I screw up by hitting the wall. Just make sure you have plenty of cover and don't get up really close to the boss. Just continually use the cover around you to make sure you stay alive, especially when you're doing loadout switches. In between the damage phases, there's going to be four score enemies that are gonna spawn up and they're gonna have these giant torches on chains. You wanna kill them as soon as possible because they're really annoying to deal with, especially during boss damage phases draw them into areas where you have lots of cover and they will come chase you and knock them out with your fusion rifle or you can use a finisher to kill them and knock them out do this as many times as you need to but the key thing is just make sure you keep your distance and knock him out with your super and with that you'll easily gg the boss and get to the next section which is the jail section to get out of the jail section look for this skeleton who's showing two marks here on screen what the white skeleton is gonna tell you is how many of these cogs need to go clockwise. And there's an orange skeleton, which is in another area. And that's gonna show you how many of these cogs need to go counterclockwise. If you shoot them once, they'll go counterclockwise. But if you shoot them a couple more times, they'll go clockwise. Again, all the locations are here on screen. If you're having issues seeing them, you can use a Viced weapon, you can use a Suros weapon, or you can use a Europa weapon. And you can see that the cogs that you can shoot are actually highlighted. This is a really cool trick that a lot of people don't actually know so the white skeleton showed two marks meaning that two of the cogs need to go clockwise and all the other four need to go counterclockwise they're just deviations of six so if you see three at the white skeleton that means that there's going to be three going clockwise and then three going counterclockwise very easy to figure out again i'm not going to show every single piece of the traversal sections but as you go through this watch out for the holes which can kill you and also these little graded traps here as you run through this section you can either jump or slide over them again try to kill the enemies before they freeze you and overwhelm you nothing too crazy about this section do watch on this side here there are grates on the right side and then jump over here in this section the rest of the puzzle is pretty easy to figure out as you get out to this bridge section here i'm going to be leveraging my assassin's cowl and my melee build to basically just run past all of these enemies do watch out there are going to be some rocks here that can collapse when you put your weight on them like for example right here to the right i'm going to shoot that one that's one of the ones that's going to collapse so just don't be caught unaware as i come up to the bridge here i'm going to melee the first enemy just to start the phase of all the enemies spawning at me but i'm invisible so i can just run right by them it doesn't even make a big deal and the screams aren't going to explode next to me you do need to re-up your invisibility all of these enemies here are perfect for this if you have your super, you can kill the enemies in the big giant scorn abomination, or you can just go invisible one more time and skip them all together and run to the sewer grate on the left hand side and then you're basically at the second encounter. All right, it's time to cover the ogre or the locus of wailing grief. This is the boss fight portion that probably takes the longest amount of time, but it's not very hard to do. It's just a process that we'll go through step by step. 
The Ogre fight is significantly different than the first fight, so let's go over those two builds we're going to use. The first build we're going to be using is a setup build, so we can do all the mechanics to get to the damage phase, and the next one will be a damage phase loadout. So, the very first loadout we're going to be using is we're going to be using a sniper rifle or a long-distance weapon of some sort to take care of some taken eyes. Along with that, we're going to be using a fusion rifle, which will help us deal with some of the larger Scorn bosses, and we're basically just going to be stacking up Dragon's Breath and using that later on during the boss damage phase. We're still going to be using Assassin's Cowl here to make sure that we get our invisibility and healing with our powered melee kills and finishers, but instead of using the Marksman Golden Gun, we're going to switch to a Blade Barrage build, and we're going to start stacking that up. Our fragments are going to be a little bit different with Ember of Mercy, Ember of Torches, Ember of Ashes, Ember of Empyrean, and Ember of Singeing. Again, some of these can be switched out if you're comfortable using that, but basically this opening section here is just to make us invisible constantly. We're going to use a long distance weapon like a sniper rifle to take care of the taken eyes in certain sections here. If you run out of special weapons here, you can just switch to a bow. I really like the Lununata 4B combat bow. Very easy to get. And this one has shoot to loot and headstone, which will help you to get more heavy ammo later on during the boss damage phase. But I really like using this because we're going to switch to a fusion rifle so we can have two fusions and a rocket launcher to do damage to the boss. So this is the first setup here. The second setup is the actual boss damage phase setup. And the reason we're gonna switch is we're gonna be using shards of Galanor. And for every blade barrage hit, we're gonna get super energy back. So we can use our super multiple times at the boss. We're gonna be shooting a dragon's breath shot, weakening the boss with our melee. And then we're gonna be going between our two fusion rifles to do damage. Unlike the first boss where we had boss spec on our weapons, we are now going to want to make sure that we have taken spec on our weapons. Taken spec does more damage than boss spec does. And it's an actual easy mod to go get. You can just go pick up secret chests inside of the last wish raid. You can do that solo. There are multiple videos on how to get it, but it's a very easy mod to get. And you want to make sure you have that on as many of the weapons as possible. Along with that, we want to make sure that we then put on triple solar surges here, as well as some defense mods like arc damage resists and concussive dampener that will help you if the boss stomps you at all. And also arc resist for specific sections in here, like the damage from the eyes and some of the taken enemies. As always with all PvE activities, make sure that your resilience is at 100 and get your intellect as high as possible. All right, let's show you the mechanics of the ogre fight. After you rally the flag, instead of heading to the left like most videos have you do, head over to the right hand side over here. It blows me away how many people use the left side for cover. It's significantly more unsafe to do when you have this perfect area of cover over here on the right side. It's so much better. I can't even tell you how much easier this makes it. All right, let's give you the order of operations of things that you need to do. The boss and a bunch of enemies will spawn up. You can kill whatever enemies are starting to chase you into the castle here, but basically what you want to do is kill the taken eyes here. When you kill all six of the taken eyes, it will spawn up a score knight. Now, just like the first encounter, that score knight will create scorn totems that you'll need to stand in to stay alive. Now, you can actually do some damage to him as he's spawning in. Use this area for cover. And once he spawns scorn totems here, you can then stand in this circle here and stay alive. However, as soon as this part starts, there will be a debuff on screen called Biting Cold. The only way to get rid of the Biting Cold mod is to to stand next to these torches that are lined along the back side of the castle. Another really good thing about this right side of the castle that no one talks about is that there is a perfect hiding spot right here that the ogre can barely hit you. So just stay here and stay safe. If he does hit you, just make sure that you're getting the Biting Cold debuff off. Now, as soon as the Biting Cold section is done, there's gonna be two snipers that are gonna spawn up. One of the great things about this particular build is we're basically just using the throwing knives as our primary weapon. Once you've cleared those enemies on that side and you're safe, go ahead and take care of the rest of the eyes, reload everything and get ready to repeat that process so that you take care of four scorn totems. You can see them on screen. I kind of zoomed in. Basically, for each scorn totem that you clear, it creates a torch in the middle. And when you deposit those four torches, that's going to start the boss damage phase. Once you've cleared those four totems and you've got the orbs in the middle, take care of all of the eyes here in the middle, except for one. So you don't want to start another blizzard or a biting cold encounter. At this point, we're going to start getting ready to do our damage phase. Now, I'm going to show this in real time to give you an idea of what's going on. 
I'm going to switch to my fusion rifle because I no longer need my sniper. I need to get as much of my fusion rifle ammo as I can. In addition, I'm actually going to go through here to this section because there are still two scorn snipers plus a bunch of ads over here on the left side. I'm going to take this opportunity to knock them out. And when I'm ready, I'm going to make myself invisible and I'm going to make sure that I've got plenty of time to stay invisible. And then I'm going to grab one of the torches. If all of the enemies are cleared on one side, really quickly just look to the opposite side because generally there will be some scorn on the opposite side that can help you refresh your invisibility. When you do this, then you're going to go deposit the torches in the four spots here around the map where you can deposit them and you're just going to continue to re-up your invisibility by killing a couple of enemies with your knives and your assassin's cowl. You can just continue to do this. It's not a big deal. And if you're ever in a moment where you need a little bit of help, you can basically just kill whatever enemies that are around and you'll be fine and you'll get some life back. In addition, every single time you have a fresh damage phase, there will be two taken minotaurs that you should take care of before you start the damage phase. You can do that after you get all of the torches ready and set up to go, or you can do it before you even start that process. In addition, you can choose which direction you want to move from totem to totem. I specifically like to go go from left to right so when I deposit them the last one that I deposit is going to be where the damage phase starts so I'm setting them up in reverse order now so from right to left so that last totem over here where I'm approaching it and just clearing a couple of the enemies that's going to be where we start damage so here's what I'm going to do now this is the one time you have to do a swap make yourself invisible and then as soon as you're ready and you're in cover then you can switch your loadout safely. Then you can grab the orb and you'll notice that I'm still invisible. This is a little bit of a hack you can use. You don't have Assassin's Cow on, but the invisibility will last. So I'm going to go through this section in slow motion so you all know how to do it and what I'm doing to get maximum damage. The very first thing I'm going to do is chuck my knives at him to debuff him and then I'm immediately going to hit him with a Dragon's Breath. This will immediately start staggering him, which will allow you to then pull out your scatter signal that has sever. And since you've used your class ability, you can then hit him with sever and then he'll do less damage to you. At this point, you have choices. You can either use lots of fusion rifle ammo or you can pop your super. I've seen some people who can hit a super every single time when they do this and every single one of the four torch areas. Here, I'm kind of waiting to get a couple of these enemies over here to the second torch so I can make sure that I get my super to pop off a couple more times. I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to hit him with the dragon's breath or knives. And at this second totem specifically, this is where there's a lot of enemies that will spawn up. So if I need to pop my super here and hit the boss and those enemies, I can be safe. You'll notice that dragon's breath is also killing those enemies there so that you stay alive. If you need to pop a healing grenade here and then continue to do damage as much as possible now you'll notice that i'm getting my super energy back super fast i'm using my two fusion rifles and doing whatever damage i can as i go across here i make sure to hit these guys with these knives so that they explode and they all get cleared i have seen some people who actually before they start the damage phases and they go to the different torches they'll actually go and kill some of the scorn on the backside to help get their super a little bit faster that's up to you but generally i think it's a little bit unsafe only do this if you are 100 confident then you can do it and if you do this correctly you can get your super back very quickly so the process is basically to hit him with a dragon's breath hit him with some of your throwing knives to debuff him pop your super whenever you possibly can and then use your fusion rifles in between and you'll be good to go I've seen some people who do this and can get him down to half damage. Now, usually what's happening is they're going and clearing the other scorn up and around the different areas and getting more super energy with their throwing knives here. Here you can see I also debuff the boss again. Use Dragon's Breath and just clear out as much of my fusion rifle ammo as I possibly can. Even with this very unoptimized, imperfect run, I'm still able to get the boss down to about a third of his life in one shot, which is pretty decent. The main thing you want to do here is stay alive. You want to make sure that you hit the ogre and keep him away from you. Keep him staggered at a distance. 
debuff him with your knives and then make sure you're doing as much damage as you possibly can again if you do this perfectly you can get a super off at each of the torch areas but once you're done with the damage phase head back over to this side and repeat the process as many times as you need to to get the boss down there's nothing different about the different phases you just rinse and repeat if you don't have any sniper rifle ammo to take care of the eyes you can easily just replace that with a bow and farm ammo especially after the damage phase if you've used all of your ammo using a bow at this section is really good and then you can clear those enemies out of the middle especially the taken minotaurs this is a really good and easy thing that you can do and once you've got some ammo on the ground you can just switch to your fusion rifle when you're ready to do damage and you're in good shape some tips and tricks in this section never double jump in this area because the ogre can actually hit you off the edge as well as the taken eyes can also do that in addition always be careful of your dragon's breath don't run into the path of dragon's breath because if it connects next to the torches next to you it will explode and kill you like i said here in the second torch area this is usually where the enemies like to rush you just take your time and make sure you knock them out so you don't get overwhelmed luckily your knives should make them explode load and keep you alive in addition try to keep your distance from the ogre especially as you're hitting your blade barrage shots because those blade barrages can kill you look around the ground for some more fresh ammo that will help you do even more damage and this particular run right here i get him down to a little bit more than a third a really solid damage phase here the biggest thing is just to remember hit him with dragon's breath debuff the boss use your fusion rifles as much as possible if you've got your super pop it be watching the timer, especially as you're going into the Biting Colds area, and always make sure you're looking for ammo as you're moving from spot to spot. After a few damage phases, you can knock out this boss and say GG and move to the next section. I do want to cover a couple of things in the traversal sections after this because it is very easy to die in this section here, especially this first wave of enemies will rush you. Sunshot is your friend here and will annihilate all of these enemies, especially before you go out to the mountain's edge. After you're done with that, you need to go out to the mountain's edge and watch out for this giant screeb here. I'm going to actually show you what he can do and how you can knock out your run. You can see he will sometimes jump back and forth between the two spots before you actually jump do a bunch of damage to him so that he actually moves up to the next area and then you will be safe to go over here to the left hand side and go into the taken storm area in this taken storm area i then use my sniper rifle or whatever long range weapons you can to knock out some of the enemies in addition since you're a hunter you can also put on stompies which will help you with the jumping you'll also notice that i have a sword on that i can use in case if something happens and i get knocked by any of the rocks i can then save myself and make sure that i don't waste a run here and i lose my solo flawless here because this debris is absolutely annoying and it can ruin your run very easily i basically just stay as far right as i possibly can because that will help us stay alive there are these little nooks and crannies here on the rocks that you can stay alive and you don't have to go onto the rocks in the middle where you can potentially get hit by those rocks that are flying around after the Taken Storm area, you'll come up to this area here. If you accidentally get knocked out, you can basically stand on that platform there and save your run. Again, a sword will do really nice things here in this specific section. Don't be afraid to use your super here. These enemies can knock you out. And another cool thing you can use in this section is you can put on a blinding grenade launcher. It doesn't matter which one you want. You just want to make sure that no matter what, you're disorienting the enemies, especially the taken enemies that have shields that can boop you off the edge and kill you. I've seen many memes here specifically of these taken enemies with the shields that will boop people off the edge and ruin their runs. So just be careful. Use your blinding grenade launchers, your supers. Don't treat this section as a nothing burger because you can die here very easily easily. Once you've cleared all of those enemies, follow the path that you see here on screen up to the next section. Have that blinding grenade launcher and have stompies on because there are a couple of opportunities that the enemies can still knock you off the edge. Having that sword in your back pocket too will help you stay alive. The biggest thing is you just don't want to get pushed off by one stupid little enemy. Watch out for the broken rocks here. Here's a perfect opportunity of where I'm using my disorienting grenade launcher to make sure that I don't die. Once you've killed that first taken shielded enemy, the boss will actually spawn up with two wizards with void shields you want to make sure you knock them out so that they, you don't die to them because the boss can kill you and he has an immune shield here at this section 
it's a perfect opportunity for you to put on two void resist mods as well as a concussive dampener mod that will help you stay alive from the boss killing you and you can see here i take a couple of shots from the boss and it can kill you if you're not paying attention in this area the biggest thing i would say is just always make sure that you have cover to fall back to i like to stay on the left side here and take care of whatever enemies i can there will be multiple waves of enemies that will spawn up so don't just run up in the middle dragon's breath is your friend here again you can see here i can just sit behind cover while dragon's breath does work i can also put on my dragon's cowl hit them with some knives and stay alive as well as get some life back by doing that i can also fall back and cover there's just no section in this area where you need to push up and be super aggressive you kind of want the enemies to come to you once all of the enemies are toast you can run up the spiral staircase to the top and face the third and final encounter the final boss is a giant taken meatball aka the chimera this is the one part that a lot of people really struggle with because there is so much going on so i'm going to break it down in a slow methodical manner so that you can understand all the different things that i do plus also give you some different options for different builds weapons and things like that Here's the main build that I used when I was doing my solo flawless. It's a very similar build to what we've been using with Assassin's Cowl. I'm going to be using Solar Siphon, heavy handed so I can make sure that I get orbs whenever I'm throwing my knives. I'm going to make sure that I have void and solar damage resist as well as concussive dampener. That will help me stay alive from the meatball shooting us as well as many enemies that are shooting solar energy. Along with that, in this first build, I'm going to be using things not necessarily to get damage, but to get ammo as well as to stay alive when I pick up an orb of power. Keeping yourself alive in this section is critical. I'm going to be using some type of weapon that has incandescent on it, and if you can, you can get enhanced incandescent, which will work really well. I'm going to be using a callus mini tool. I know that there's a lot of videos of people using Sunshot specifically, but because I'm using Dragon's Breath as my heavy weapon, I want to reserve that for my exotic slot. So another good option, if you don't have a callus mini tool with incandescent, you can go do the Dares of Eternity, and you can get a BXR 55 Battler with incandescent. It works very, very well. If you have one of those grenade launchers that I mentioned, in the very first boss fight say for example the cataphract or the caraxis's distress that would work really well in this slot specifically and then you can choose to use sunshot if you'd like in this first slot here i'm going to be switching between my scatter signal with overflow control burst or slice control burst again it just depends on which one you want to use and then i'm going to be going back and forth with that and fourth times the charm focus fury on this world drop sniper if you've done the last wish raid a really good sniper that a lot of people are using is the supremacy with rewind rounds and kinetic trammers it does really really good damage on the boss as long as you're hitting those critical shots it will help you reload your magazine and luckily you can farm some of the chests in the last wish for free so you might be able to get a drop like that but if you don't have that that's okay you can often just play the game and get decent rolls of sniper rifles you can also look for a triple tap sniper rifle or use something like a distant pull from season of the deep in the gunslinger solar subclass we're going to go back to our golden gun marksman we're going to be switching over to our celestial nighthawk here in a moment but our fragments are going to be ember of singeing ember of torches ember of ashes and that's a big difference here because we want to apply as many scorch stacks to the enemies as possible ember of empyrean and ember of solace you'll see when we're doing this we're going to be basically lighting the ground on fire because there's so many taken blights that we need to kill constantly now this is our setup phase for when we're getting into the damage section we're going to be able to again use assassin's cowl to get our melee kills and our finishers that will give us invisibility and healing but when we're ready to do damage we go back to a very similar build like we did on the first boss we're going to be going back to a double kinetic weapon surge in our leg mods as well as our celestial nighthawk instead of using the weapons that i had in the first boss we're going to go back to dragon's breath and use our sniper to do lots of damage on the meatball all right let's break down the fight let's start things off and one of the first things you'll be greeted with when the meatball actually spawns up is one of the nuisances of this boss fight which is a ton of taken thrall that you constantly have to manage so having them explode constantly is really nice using your combination of knives as well as your incandescent weapons on each of the floors there will be two wizards that will also spawn up and you'll have to knock them out they shoot a deadly amount of solar energy at you you need to make sure that you hide and make sure that you make yourself invisible and use your knives as much as possible to stay alive 
Now, what I start to do is remove some of the eyes on one side of the meatball. That way I can get things cleared a little bit. I can start to clear some of the taken blights on the field, continue to build up some ammunition and clear off a side here. Now there's two sides of the map that I really like here. You can either go to the far left or the far right side. Just be careful because the blights will penetrate the cover and you need to make sure that you're watching your life. Once you've knocked out all six of the eyes on the meatball, then the two score knights will approach very similar to how you did the second encounter. I shoot a Dragon's Breath over to the right-hand side to try and take care of that Scorn Knight on the right, and I'm forcing this guy to make another Scorn Totem right here. If I can get two Totems in this section, I can extend the damage phase and get a lot more damage on this floor. Now we have to deal with the Corrupted Hex Drinker and the Hex of Vengeful Corruption. I'm going to slow this down so everyone knows what's going on. Once you've killed one of these Scorn Knights and they've created their Totems, there will be a Hex Drinker that will be trying to hit you with these torches. You will notice that you have a debuff called the Hex of Vengeful Corruption. If the timer runs out when it hits zero and you still have it, you will die. It's kind of like taking hot potato. So one of the things that I do is wait till about three seconds, hit him with my melee, and then jump away. If you hit him right away, what will happen is that he can chase you down and reapply the buff on you. There will be a buff called Imminent Wish on screen as well, and that gives you a countdown to the amount of time that you need to clear the Scorn Totems. When the charge gets down to about six seconds, that's when all of those Scorn Hex Drinkers will die. At this point, you can go back over and try to clear a couple more of these Totems, and then you can get ready to do damage. There's a little bit of time in between when the timer hits zero and when the boss actually is available to do damage. So I find a place where I'm in cover and then I switch to my build that has Celestial Nighthawk and the two Kinetic Surge mods in the legs. It doesn't take a lot of time to do this and really all we wanna make sure we do is get our Golden Gun shut off because one Golden Gun shot like this will do really good damage. If you can hit him with your knives to debuff him if you still have them, you can do a significant amount of damage once that's done you can then do more damage to the boss with your snipers grenade launchers or dragon's breath but if you don't have time you need to just make sure that you play it safe the annoying thing here in this section is a bunch of taken thrall will spawn up every time that you have a damage phase so you constantly have to be managing them and your time and your life so just watch yourself and be safe another cool trick you can do on all the platforms is once you clear all the totems that you need to you can actually jump to the next section as long as you jump off of those taken balls they will do a little bit of damage to you, but you can switch your build and then get a ton of damage on the boss. Now, sometimes the boss is stupid and doesn't rotate like he does here, but generally he will rotate over to you and you can do lots of critical hit damage and you'll be good to go. Once you're done with that, you can actually switch to your builds that you need to. And there's no enemies up here yet. They haven't spawned up. They're going to spawn in a minute, but basically you can make yourself invisible. And as soon as you're invisible, you can head back to the first platform and pick up whatever ammunition is left down there it's really important that you do this because any ammunition that is left on one of the previous platforms will make it so that less ammo will spawn on the other future platforms so you can see here there's some heavy on my right hand side i'm going to make sure that i pick that up after the damage phase on this second phase area, I like to stay by these walls over here, not only to clear the Scorn Totems, but also to deal with the Corrupted Hex Drinkers. This gives us a lot of protection from the boss. You can see here I have natural cover to my left-hand side, and I can pop my Golden Gun and do as much damage with my Golden Gun, Dragon's Breath, and Sniper Rifle. You can see I'm just absolutely melting the boss and doing what I can here. The key here is just to make sure that you're taking your time, getting as much damage safely, because anytime you push it in this dungeon, Dungeon, I feel like that is really where people start to die. If you haven't dealt with all of the different taken enemies, this is a good opportunity to do this. In addition to grabbing all the ammo that is here on this platform, I'm also going to use my sniper and take care of a couple of the eyes before I even spawn up there, as well as some of the taken wizards. Now, this upper area here is very dangerous. It's probably the most dangerous area outside of the final damage phase because all of the taken blights will go through pieces of cover. A lot of the enemies are going to constantly respawn. There's really no safe spot except being as far back as you can. I like to snipe as many of the eyes as I can, just like we did in the second encounter. Take a second and kill all the eyes but one, and that will give you a lot more leverage to clear all of the ads here safely. 
I like to stay behind this platform here. This is a great opportunity for you to get ahead of all these taken thrall that are going to spawn up. This is a great area for cover. The other area for cover is right here on the left hand side. I've got a little bit of a roof above me, which helps provide some cover, but also this is a great spot to take care of all the score knights and the taken thralls that spawn up. You can see I annihilated all of the taken thrall right as they spawned up. I used a dragon's breath shot to the right hand side, and now I'm taking care of this score knight here. Ideally, he will stack the two totems on top of where he is and also where his corpse is. Unfortunately, here in this opportunity, that didn't quite happen. So you try to clear what you can when you can and stay safe. Right here, I'm going to hit my Scorn Hex Drinker. You'll notice that the Scorn Knight on the right side is not cleared. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to go over to that right-hand side and potentially die. There's really no benefit to that. At that point, I can then do damage to the Meatball from this position, or you can jump up on top of that roof area, like this video shows from Colonel Prime, and you can do tons of damage here. Now, you can take damage from the Taken Thrall downstairs, but this area here is very secure. You just need to make sure that you get off those platforms so you don't lose a potential damage phase. And you can jump down here to these rocks, get some good cover, and switch whatever you need. Now, before I go do the big mega damage phase, I'm going to collect as much ammunition as I can. And I'm also going to grab a chest piece that has arc damage resist as well as void resist and concussive dampener. There's no solar damage in the mega damage phase. All I need to do is keep myself alive from the eyes and this will help out. Once you jump up here, then you'll need to start the damage phase. I'm going to repeat the process that I did at the ogre, basically shoot dragon's breath. And you'll notice that all of the eyes on the side start to take damage and start to get scorched. The the biggest thing here in this particular section is just to make sure that you're watching your life because you can die very quickly if all of the eyes spawn up and the meatball hits you with the void shot. Now you don't immediately have to go clockwise in this section. You can go down below, look for some more ammunition, and then hop up to the other side. I generally just do clockwise or counterclockwise all in one fell swoop because it flows a little bit better. At this point, we're just repeating the process. We're going to hit him with Dragon's Breath, hit him with our melee, and then make sure that we're doing as much damage as we can with a sniper, and we're good to go. Once you get to this third platform, this is the last platform before the entire phase starts again. So hit him with Dragon's Breath, hit him with the melee to weaken him again, hit him with your sniper as much as possible, reapply Dragon's Breath as needed. And the cool part about this is if you are running out of ammo and you don't feel safe and you want to make sure that you have a little bit of breathing room, you can always just hop down. You don't have to stay up there where all of the eyes can hit you. The boss can still hit you, but you can find some easy cover and reset. And once you're done, you can reset the entire phase and start it again. Once the boss reaches the final stand, AKA the little line in his health marker, you'll be teleported up on top of this platform here. Now there is a cheese here in this section where you can actually jump down and go to the third platform and just kill the boss from a distance but i feel like they're gonna patch that at some point let's just show you doing it legit we're gonna hide behind the right side pillar here and we're gonna basically just dip in between the left hand side and the right hand side at any point where i feel i'm starting to take too much damage i'm just gonna hide for a second and if you need to back up away from the column so that the meatball doesn't hit you with the void shots that also works do as much damage as you can and you'll be in good shape some people also like to use malfeasance with lucky pain on hunter you can certainly do that here but not everybody has access to malfeasance and sometimes they're not really good at that build but you can use whatever you want as long as you're staying alive and you can ggs this boss and solo flawless this dungeon the biggest tips and tricks i can give is just to remind you to just keep moving always be using cover don't just sit in one spot look for all of the ammunition you can potentially get you can even switch chess pieces in the middle of a fight as long as you're using cover this is a fight that you can actually kind of take your time. It feels very hectic when you're in the moment, but you can kind of take a breather once you've cleared one section. And that leads me to my best tip that I can give for this dungeon. Just be patient. It feels like the boss takes a long period of time, but the truth is if you can get through the mega damage phase, you'll probably get him down to about half of his damage and you can just clear him after that. It's not super crazy. Take your time, be patient, watch your life, don't ever try and push it too hard and you'll be in good shape and be able to solo flawless this dungeon. If you have some questions or need some help, come on over to twitch.tv slash manodestra where we do tons of PVE helps inside of Destiny 2. If anything inside of this video helped you out, a way to show your gratitude is to like the video, share it with some people who may need some help with it, and of course, subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. Good hunting, Guardians. I'll see you next time in the universe of Destiny.